Hi everyone, welcome back to Poetology. This video is about collage again, because you seem to love videos about collage. And today I want to talk about collage as a ritual. Why making a collage can be a time that is carved out of your day, when you are focusing on yourself and your interior world, and enter a more meditative state. I think that collaging can be a great way of collecting your thoughts and your moods and giving them a specific shape. When you are making cut and paste, you are arranging seemingly disparate elements into a coherent pattern. And by doing that, you are finding meaning in something that appears random. And the finished collage can also hold many things. It can capture a moment with a certain aesthetic. I love poetry, and poetry has an amazing capacity for capturing emotions and moods and ideas and states and aesthetics. But I think collage, because it's visual, has a, a very direct way of doing the same thing. And personally, I like combining words and images. I like to make collage poems. So this is another example of a collage poem, one where I'm particularly attuned to the overlap between collaging and ritual making. When I started making this collage, the first thing was to look at the material I have and see what I'm drawn to. So a few pictures caught my attention straight away and I put them together to see what it would look like. Here's what I did. So this is what I've got so far. I chose these pictures of people being taken away by wolves and I've put them on the edges of this picture of the Seven Sisters in Sussex and I put these on this big wrapping paper that I have. Um, I don't know, I like the contrast but I may not <laughs> go for it in the final um, iteration because it is a little over the top so yeah we'll see. That was the first step for me, just putting these things together, trying to get an atmosphere, a mood, see if it works, see if it leads to other ideas. Um, this page here, I found the book on the ground and I just took the map and the opening pages of the book to make collages with. And these come from a book I found in Oxfam about dogs that has a lot of um, mythology in it with wolves and coyotes and other canids. I also like to talk about the scraps of everyday life and that's how I refer to the process of collecting various material sources from whatever comes up. I don't work too hard to seek things out. Sometimes I go to second-hand bookshops, sometimes I look for magazines, but very often I just find things randomly, and that's something I love to work with. I don't have the space to have a huge amount of archival materials to choose from, and so I work with just very limited resources, and maybe that adds to the randomness of the process. I cannot choose my sources as carefully as I would if I had an infinite store to draw from. After this, I started looking for more elements. I really got drawn to the dog slash wolf theme, but then I also found other objects that I wanted to include in my collage to make it geometrically significant. It might appear a little random, but actually there's an order of things. I had a quadrant and then a semi-quadrant, and I added the objects in a specific location each. So I've added other elements in the corners. So we still have the two wolves taking people away at opposite ends, although I've moved them around slightly. And I added different dogs in the other corner. And then I added four more objects in black and white to make them a bit more subtle. We've got a tree, a window, a church and a bird. So the way I'm working here is according to magical arrangements. I'm trying to have objects at the quarters and the semi-quarters. So arranging eight objects in a circle like this is some kind of sacred 
geometry or something that is done in pagan rituals where we've got the four directions and the semi-quarters. And so if I follow this logic now, I would like to add text in the center. So I would like this to be some kind of frame. I'm still not sure about this background over here. I might change it. Um, we'll see. But I'd like to find text in the middle to make a very simple poem and for that to be the center of the piece. So up to the end, almost, I didn't know if I would be able to keep the pink background because it looked so extravagant, but when I started looking for the text, I found exactly what I wanted. Lo and behold, I have found exactly what I needed, and it's pink. So this is going to be a very simple bilingual poem L'impossible transit, the lost door, the missing room, the hidden floor. I may change the positioning of the words, but I think I've got it. And because it's pink, it might actually work with this background and be a very strange mixture of camp and understated, mysterious black and white work put together in a very strange way. So that may be the final work. I think I'll just have to arrange the object slightly differently as I glue them. So it might shift a little bit, but basically I've got my work and it will be titled L'impossible transit. And just FYI, the background came from this black and white photography magazine. And in the corner, there were pictures taken from Dog Spirit. So this typically is not a very good book to read, but it's pretty nice because you get a lot of pictures of dogs um, that you can use in a variety of ways for your collages. So Oxfam can help. Yeah, I like to work with Oxfam books and magazines. And then the words came from this Swiss gay magazine that I received called 360. And I didn't look very far. It was just these few words rearranged. I didn't have to do that much work to put them together. But I think that's okay. And finally, you can see how I pasted everything together using the glue I've recommended before, Mod Podge Matte Glue which is not perfect for magazines because it tends to be a little too wet for very thin pages, but it still works and I'm generally happy with it. I usually start with the background, keep the poem for last when I'm gluing everything together, and I take a picture with my phone ahead of time before moving everything around. So if I need to, I can quickly check my phone and see where I had placed different things before starting the gluing process. This takes some time, but it's a very focused moment of putting everything together and trying to have it exactly right. And it's very enjoyable to see the final product coming together after working on it for some time. And I love how I had no idea what I was going to do before I started the collage. It's only when I started putting things together that it became clear I was producing a um, specific work with a specific dynamic. All I had was this kind of vague notion that I've been working on for a bit about the collage itself reflecting a ritual. I'm very happy with how it came out and I think it captures something of various thoughts and ideas I had in my mind during several days before I made the collage. And I think that often happens. Whatever the atmosphere is in my own head, my concerns, my thoughts, some aesthetics that I've seen from various sources, whatever these things are, they often make their way into the work unexpectedly. And that's something I really like about it. And if I make another collage today, it will probably look very different. And I think it's such a great way of keeping track of what's going on in your inner and outer worlds to capture a specific moment and have very direct access to what was going on at that time because visual elements reinforce the writing, the written message. 
and it's also a very roundabout way of writing poems if you are feeling stuck or if you're intimidated by more conventional poetry it's a great way of getting started with very literal cut up from magazines and other sources supported by a certain iconography that you compose by yourself. I hope this video was helpful and inspiring. I wish you a lot of joy with your own collage endeavors and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!